So if we have part of our, uh, our start change in table, then we can't figure it out from this information? Well, in this problem, the start change in table probably won't be too helpful because, again, we're not, uh, if I was doing this problem on the test, I would never actually solve for the moles. Okay. And remember that the start change end tables, you're only supposed to put things in, in moles. So maybe we'll talk about that more at the end, but let's just leave out the start change end table. We saw last time that we can do this type of stoichiometry problem purely as a unit conversion type okay. problem. good. All right, let's talk through this together now. Right. So we, um, here's our starting units. Um, now it should be clear that these units should be grams of silver chloride to cancel these units. Now what we care about is calcium chloride, but we can't go straight to calcium chloride. We have to go through the moles. So we have to go to moles of silver chloride. Uh, and here we need to use the um, molar mass of silver chloride, which we get from the periodic uh, tables. That comes out to be 143.5. And again, my advice is to do those calculations on paper. 
So I've got that written down. Uh, now this, um, now we have to get rid of the moles of silver chloride. So it goes on the bottom, and now we can get uh, start talking about calcium chloride. These coefficients come from the balanced equation. That's why we had to balance this. Um, and I think you both saw now that we need to get rid of the moles of calcium chloride and replace that with grams of calcium chloride. Now the calcium weighs 40, approximately, and the chlorine weighs 35.5. But there's two of them, right? And I think you might have left that out in your calculation. So since we have two of these, uh, you got to multiply that by two. So I'll do that on paper. So that would be, I'm doing this right. Uh, two times five is 10, carry the one. Two times five is 10, plus one is 11, carry the one. Two times three is six, put in the seven. So that seems to come out to 71. Maybe the safest way to write it is like this, to emphasize that we have one calcium but two chlorine. Sorry, and how, where do we get that from? They gave us that in the formula for the calcium chloride. So that would give us 111. So this would be 111 grams of calcium chloride for each mole of calcium chloride. All right, so we have to be careful retrieving the information that we need from the periodic table. If there's more than one atom in the formula, we have to multiply that weight. What answer did you get here? I rounded, um, I had it incorrectly here. I had ah. 100 instead of 111. Okay. Okay, yeah, you were rounding that off to 100, which may or may not be safe, depending, how, do you, how can you tell how, how aggressively you can round? Are you looking at the answers? Yeah, that seems obvious, but many people never even think about that, right? You can tell how aggressively to round by looking at the choices. Since it's a multiple choice test, if the choices are far apart, you can be very aggressive about rounding. If the choices are very close to each other, you have to be more careful and carry more places. In fact, if you see a problem, um, remember we talked last time about how most of the problems are designed to avoid the need for lots of calculations. If you see a problem where the choices are very close to each other, you should consider saving it for later. Because those can be very time consuming, right? To work uh, when, you, when you can't round very much. And even if you, and in that case, you're very likely to make a careless mistake somewhere along the way and not get the point anyway. So if you see a problem where you don't think you're going to be able to round very much, well, uh, there's plenty of other fish in the sea. Maybe you might want well to try another problem. Of course, it's a judgment call, but that's one thing they should think about. Right. Okay. Um, so now we have to find the most efficient way to make this calculation now that we have all of these here. Again, we know the test is designed to avoid the need for complicated calculations. So. Do with this. Um, to go through and uh, reduce, right? And cancel like these. Uh, yeah. The very reason why we mm -hmm. set the problem up like this, correct? Yeah, what kind of cancellation can we make? Um, well, we could cancel out 72 and 144 and make Yeah, it that's a good point. Now, so far, I really haven't been rounding this very much at all. I've left this as a pure number because it wasn't any trouble. But what number is this very close to? Well, this is very close to 144. And why is that convenient? Because that's exactly twice of 72. That's no accident. They set the problem up to reward people who look to reduce in this way. But most people won't even think about that. All right, so we should say now, it looks like they set this up to be close to 144 so we can do this reduction. So I'll do this reduction, and I'll get a two down here. All right, um, now what would be another reduction that we can do? Yeah, why don't I call this 110? The choices would have, have to be pretty close to each other that it wouldn't be okay to round from 110 to 111. So that's almost certainly safe to round that to 110. Uh, and now I can divide 2 into 110. And I get 55. And again, I'm doing all my calculations on paper to avoid mistakes. And now what? What's the answer? We'll divide uh, 55 by 2. Okay, so what do we get? Let's work that out. It's 27.5, is that what you're talking about? Okay, sounds right. Let's check that.
Yeah, that was pretty close to the answer that you got in the first place anyway, even though uh, I don't know if you rounded to a lot and just made a mistake when you got 100 here, but that might have been safe anyway um, to round to um, 100. Uh, but 110, we might as well stick with 110 because it's just about as easy to divide 110 by 2 as 100 by 2. So in that case, so you get, get to use some judgment about the kinds of rounding that you're going to do. Um, but uh, so what's the answer to the question? Um, 27.5 grams of calcium chloride are needed to prepare 17 grams of silver chloride. Yeah, that's right. 27.5 grams of calcium chloride. 